let's face it, pretty much uh, every single one of us owns one of these tools in their toolbox. This is a, a mirror uh, attached to a telescoping handle. I mean, uh, we use that with a flashlight in order to try to see or find a bolt that gets lost in the back of the engine or the belly pan of your truck, car, or off-road buggy like this one. I mean, sometimes it can be a very difficult task because you have to shine the light almost at a perfect angle uh, onto the mirror so that the reflection reflects back into your eye. This is not really a lot of fun and can be very difficult. Well, fortunately for us, there's a tool that uh, us mechanics, we can use to help us for these kind of tasks, and it's called a boroscope. So a boroscope is basically a camera that is attached to a fiber optic strand and with a monitor on the other side. And this is a fairly simple concept. Uh, and it, the, there's a light, flashlight, that is at the tip of the, uh, the camera, and it'll allow you to snake uh, the fiber optic into areas where you can't personally get into and then take a look. I mean, this is a very uh, useful tool for a lot of us mechanics, but the problem has been that they were very expensive to get. But we are all in luck because prices have gone down significantly in the last few years for these boroscopes. And you know, boroscopes uh, are very handy for, for people who like mechanical work and especially, for instance, if uh, you're trying to inspect the inside of your car engine, for instance, you open, you remove the, uh, the air filter, and then you can use the boroscope with the fiber optic to look at the valves or inspect the inside. You know, what about maybe opening the, uh, the diff cover? You know, that's a lot of, it's difficult. You know, it's messy. There's a lot of oil that drains. That plus, you have to put silicone around the uh, the cover to put it back again and refill it in order to inspect the ring gear, for instance. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. You can basically just remove the drain plug and then put the fi the fiber optic tip inside and, and and then turn the axle and inspect the gears. This is just one quick example, but I'm certain there are hundreds and thousands of other applications for boroscopes, especially for us uh, off-road buggy builders like this ones, we like to build them very tight and compact. So there's not a whole lot of space for us to, uh, to inspect bolts uh, or to find missing bolts or missing nuts that fall or even wrenches that fall in the belly of our off-road machine. So Boroscope is something that is uh, very, very useful to us. So what I have here is a depth stick DS580 industrial quality boroscope. So this is made by depth stick. DS580 Professional Industrial Endoscope. This one has dual 5 megapixel cameras. It has a 5 inch IPS LCD screen, a F full high definition image output on it. It has an IP67, which is a, a standard for waterproof probe. So the probe is basically waterproof in it. It has a high performance lithium battery in it, as well as a Bluer 2.0 image tech camera. This is for the uh, imaging, as well as a durable metal snake cable. So let's take a peek inside. Obviously, as you can see, very nice and beautiful hard plastic case. As you can see, this is industrial quality. Very nice latches on it. It comes with a, a sponge on the inside in order to hold all the components in place. So first of all, let's, uh, let's take a look at the uh, screen module. As you can see, very nice, beautiful quality uh, screen, five inch screen right here. What do I have also? This is the probe. As I said previously, it is a fiber optic 
that goes uh, that wraps around uh, and then there's a camera on one side uh, two cameras in this case two five megapixel cameras flashlight integrated as well as the connector that goes here and you have the charge cable for it all this in addition to manual some other little connectors here if you want to try to to hold the the probe into different spots so that's it really looking forward to seeing how that works let's take a look at the probe first well that's a really nice touch we have um, reusable velcro ties here so these are just velcro that you can reuse they're not uh, you don't have to throw them away you can reuse them that's neat i think this is a 10 foot uh, probe well, we'll measure it and make sure how long it is comes uh, wrapped in plastic This is the camera side right here. So that's uh, interesting. Well, I don't think I'm going to be using this uh, this plastic wrap. So I'm just going to try to pull it out. How sturdy this cable, this probe is. This is nice. So I'm gonna I'm gonna measure measure it with my measuring tape. Pretty certain it is 10 feet. Just wanna make sure. That's the camera side right here. So I'm just gonna... Yep. Right on, 120 inches. I think that's definitely, that's going to be long enough for, for what I use it for. All right, so let's connect the screen or the monitor to the probe. So there's a connector at the back here and it is actually keyed. So it only goes in one way. I really like how the connector is actually made out of metal and not a plastic. So this is something that's gonna last you pretty much a lifetime. All right, so it's ready to turn on. There's uh, an on button at the back and there's a couple of buttons at the front. I have not read the manual yet, but I'm, I'm very anxious. I wanna see how the image looks like when I turn it on. All right, here we go. We're gonna turn it on. I'm gonna hold the button at the at the back. I'm gonna hold it on for two seconds. Look at that. This is incredible. The quality of this monitor is unreal. I mean, full color. It gives you also the uh, the date and the time. Uh, it just needs some adjustment, but I can't believe that. I mean, let's take a look at the. Uh, the probe it's actually eliminated this is really really neat i'm looking at my shoes <laughs> this is awesome i can't wait to read the manual on this and to check what all all these buttons do here i have to do that and then we'll test it out uh, on the buggy so I don't need the full 10 feet right now for the Pro. So what I basically did is I just wrapped it around. Very easy to uh, to, to actually refold it back. I'm gonna use the re reusable uh, uh, ties to keep it in place. Now it's going to be ready for, uh, for testing. So one of them is on. And the next one is on now. There you go. 
So before even reading the manual, what I noticed is there's a button on the back as well. And I checked that out and it actually gives you light. So there's a light that comes out from this end as well. If you press the, uh, the button, I did that. So, so now I'm ready to read the manual and then we'll test it right next. This is the owner's manual. I read it. It's a multi-language user manual. It's actually not that long at all. It took me about five minutes to go through the manual. It's only eight pages for the English section. All right, so let's take a closer look at the depth stack, the S580. So as you can see, there's a whole bunch of buttons here. There's one button on the top right hand corner. This is the on button. And uh, there's a button right here, and this one is to uh, to turn on the flashlight, the, the light that comes out of here. If we take a peek here, there's actually a 32 gigabyte SD card that comes already in it. You can remove this SD card. It's a micro SD card, and this is the uh, the, the USB-C uh, charge cable for it. You can also use this uh, cable here to transfer uh, pictures and videos uh, to your computer instead of storing them on the SD card. All right, so basically to turn it on, all we have to do is just press and hold the power button for two seconds. And the second button we're going to look at is this button right here. And this one is, uh, if you press it once, it will take a picture. If you press and hold, it's now taking a video that is automatically stored on the, uh, on the SD card. You want to stop the video, you, you press it again. Let's take a look at uh, button number three. So button number three is the uh, the uh, the down and plus uh, arrow. You click it uh, to brighten the LED light in the camera. Here you go. So you can make the LED lights uh, brighter or uh, dimmer. And as you can see, the screen auto automatically adjusts to the brightness, so it's not over uh, overwhelmed. And you can also use it to move the cursor up and down uh, once you go into the menu button. Uh, button number four is, uh, is this one here, which is once again, you click to dim the LED lights for the camera and you can also move the cursor. So it's the same thing. There you go. We'll leave them on the brightest uh, setting. Button number five is this one here. So normally when previewing the interface, uh, you single press this button to rotate the image 180 degree. So it rotates the image 180 degree. And it does give you an indication at the top here that the image has been rotated 180 degree. And also when previewing the interface, long pressing this button will switch lenses. Because remember this one here, the DS580 is a dual lens uh, boroscope. So let's long press it and see what happens. So now it's uh, it's seeing it's using a side camera to see, and uh, it's actually the camera is there's a camera on the side right here instead of the front. So there's uh, there are two different cameras. So for instance here it's now looking at the floor instead of looking at the wall. So we press it again, and you swap. Now we're looking at the the wall, which is the side of a wooden cabinet that I have here. Um, so when previewing, yeah, so return function when after uh, entering the album setting menu, press this button to return to the previous level of operation interface. So let's look at uh, button number six, which is the big orange one right in the middle. So if you want to hold this button for two seconds to enter the album. Okay, so remember the album uh, that we saved a few uh, videos. So I uh, can press, let's see, you can play the video that you pressed. Uh, that we recorded earlier, or you can move uh, to the pictures that we took. And you can see this is another video, another picture that we took. These are all saved on the uh, on the SD card. You have to best press the 180 in order to to return to the uh, the interface. The menu, the menu button, and press it. And there's a couple of uh, menu items here. So the first one is resolution for this particular boroscope. It's a five. Um, megapixel resolution so that's uh, that's you can't change that that is set um, in the software so you can't change it 
but you can change the auto power off. So if you click enter on it, uh, you basically can go down and you can put it at uh, 15, 30, whatever. I'll just leave it on off for now. And then if we go down to time setting, so you can set the time. Press OK. The language here can obviously choose the language that you want, the screen uh, brightness. Uh, you can format the SD card here. Uh, so go SD card. So this is uh, erasing all the pictures that I've already taken in the video. You can reset the whole system. Uh, storage space, it tells you how much you've used. There's uh, 29 megabytes out of 32. So pretty much nothing. Data transmission. So the, this data transmission, if you connect a USB-C from here to your uh, computer or to a hard drive and you click data transmission, it just moves everything out of the SD card through the data cable to your computer. Tells you the version of it. Next, and we're back to the top. Press the menu again. Return. There you go. <laughs> so you have to press the uh, the return back to the interface. Okay, so that's uh, that's all. There's a, a small reset button on the side here that you have to press. Uh, it's kind of hidden a little bit, um, but in case you run into issues, you can press the reset button for it. So uh, yes, that's uh, that's pretty much it. This is pretty simple, very easy to use interface, uh, and we're ready to start testing it and looking on some interesting items. So before we go and look at some interesting mechanical items, I did forget a few things I'm going to talk about. Uh, so uh, the first one is the LED indicator right here. So if it's uh, if uh, the LED is blue and flashing, that means the battery is low. If it's solid blue, that means it's working perfectly fine, no issues. If it's red and flashing, this that means the uh, it's charging. And if it's uh, solid red, that means charging has finished. Uh, so uh, one other thing also is um, some of the indicators on the screen. So if you can look on the top uh, right-hand corner of the screen, right there, you can see there's a battery icon. And uh, as the battery is discharged, uh, this icon changes uh, just as your own cell phone. And there's right beside it, there's the, uh, the, uh, the SD card, uh, if it's present or not present. Uh, in the top uh, middle of the screen, you can see there's a letter A, and this letter indicates the uh, the uh, the lens that you're using. So, for instance, if you want to change to the right lens, uh, to the other lens in this particular boroscope, I'll just press this, long press this button here. Now it's changing lens, it's looking at the floor, and you might be, not be able to see, but there's a letter B uh, right there. So maybe one constructive uh, criticism for depth stack would be to change the color of these um, letters uh, to something darker, maybe. To, maybe they will show up a little bit better. But anyways, so back to A right now. And uh, the top left-hand corner is in, uh, in photo shoot right now. So if I press it once, it takes a photo. If I press and hold, it's taking a video now, right now and it's showing you the time that you've been recording. If I long press the OK, uh, we're seeing the photos and the videos stored on the SD card. But what you can also do, if you press menu right here, you can uh, see the information of the video or the picture. So you can delete it, delete all. Um, so I don't want to delete it and just move up and down. You can delete all the name, the size, and the resolution for it. Okay, so I think I think now we're uh, we're ready. Uh, so I'll just return back back again. I'm ready to uh, to test it by looking at some uh, interesting stuff. So the first uh, inspection that we're gonna do is for a uh, for a round tube. This simulates the tubes of a chassis that you have built, or uh, the inside of the runners of a engine air intake, for instance. So all we have to do is. Uh, just turn on the, the depth stack boroscope and the light uh, comes on right away and as you can start seeing here you can see the inside fairly well all right so here we go we start going in so this basically allows you to uh, to check the, uh, the the walls for cracks for instance or 
uh, if you want to see uh, anything else that you're inspecting inside the material and all you have to do is just feed the the tube all the way inside and then you can see so the really nice thing about the um, this uh, particular boroscope it has the dual lens and some of them also from depths that came with come with the three lenses so the uh, the dual lens what is really nice is I can actually press this button here and it will change see it's changing now the camera view from um, from the front camera to the side camera so now we're looking straight at the side wall and as you can see here see the light how it comes from the uh, the light is coming right on the side and essentially you can inspect the walls in uh, a lot more detail see for instance here it looks like a crack but it's 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 probably not a crack but see how precise it is look look at that this is insane as I'm feeding it through the tube I'm basically inspecting the side walls inside obviously if this was an engine uh, air intake runner I would be investigating this crack fairly uh, in, in a lot more detail as you can see I don't see any more cracks and all I have to do uh, if I want to inspect the other sides of the wall uh, of the tube wall here, here it is all I have to do basically is uh, is uh, just kind of turn the umbilical uh, or the probe inside as you can see here see I'm kind of zooming in and out with my hand let's see what happens if I reduce the uh, the light oh, go the Sun see it adjusts automatically see if this was a, in the inside of an engine I would be investigating a lot more but I suspect this uh, this kind of crack here is from uh, from the bend uh, because this is a bent tube that I'm inspecting so there's this is this is extremely small cracks like I wouldn't be worried about worried about these for a chassis belt because there's a whole bunch of bent tubes like this one here let's see oh now it's all the way down so if I uh, if I increased now I increase it to the max for the illumination let's try to change the uh, the camera back here you go now that's the front camera this is really really neat you can see the weld this is a welded tube on the inside and you can clearly see the weld so this is nice all right so the next uh, inspection I'm going to do is right behind my engine between the firewall I can't see the back of the engine and I've always wanted to kind of be able to inspect it properly so uh, let us do that here you go so we're basically sneaking the uh, the probe and the cameras in the behind the engine check this out check this out I just found a loose bolt in the back of the engine this is crazy I would have never been able to see that without the boroscope I'm going to have to get some remove some parts and retighten that bolt it has been loosening over time I do have three bolts holding uh, a mount uh, hold the engine on the back of the head this is the uh, the driver's side head so here's another area where you can use the boroscope this is the uh, the belly of my off-road buggy and I do have drive shafts obviously and some uh, u-joints so I, I was able to sneak the the probe with the two cameras right in and I could check the uh, the u-joint caps in the inside of the u-joint just to see here it is and I can check for any cracks or any broken parts okay so the more I explore this boroscope the more I find different things that I can do with it like this past summer I had issues with my master disconnect switch this is the uh, the master that uh, connects the uh, the negative of the battery to the entire uh, basically chassis and a few times my off-road buggy pretty much shot off um, in the middle of the trail and I was always wanted to to check that out I knew there was something wrong with this switch here unfortunately as you can see it is so extremely tight in here uh, I, I can't I can't basically look so there is an opening 
right here, right here, that I could put the probe in and to check to see if the connections at the back are actually solid. Uh, I can't remove this switch unless I remove the entire seat because the switch is connected with a short, um, very thick battery cable and I need to undo the bolt that is at the bottom uh, completely underneath, uh, right underneath the, the transfer case. So let us see if we can actually see it with this depth stack boroscope. Let's see. Check this out. This is unreal. Like I'm able to explore and to check all the connections for the battery right underneath here check this out it's kind of hard to hold the the two monitors and the and the camera all at the same time but I wanted to show you see how I can check so I'm using now I'm using the side camera no it doesn't look like it's loose at all so it's very tight and I can even read some of the numbers at the back of the camera. Check this out, this is insane. So what I can do now is, how about we flip it 180 degrees in case I want the image flip. So if I press this once, see how it turns it? Uh, 180 degrees, go back. So if, if for instance, uh, if the image was like that and I wanted to read what was on it, I could just press this button right here and it just turned it 180 degrees. So this is another use of the of the depth stack, and I I'm going to really highly recommend uh, using the dual or even triple cameras because it expands its use by so much for you. So this is the fuel cell that I built for my off road buggy a couple of years ago. It's uh, made out of aluminum, and I basically have a fill cap, and I open the fill cap and. I can basically inspect the inside of the fuel cell. How many times have you lost bolts or nuts or you ever want to inspect the inside of your fuel cell? So I built this fuel cell for my off-road buggy out of aluminum myself and I did build some baffles on the inside and I've always wanted to inspect the inside of my fuel cell. As you can see here, I can see basically the pickup tube and the baffles, it is uh, half full of fuel. All right, last but not least, as I mentioned before, we are going to inspect the inside of my axle for the off-road buggy. So this is a two and a half ton military axle and I've already removed the fill to the fill cap um, right here. And now I'm gonna insert the boroscope and inspect the gears. So you can see here uh, the bearing. These are the carrier bearings that I can check. And these are the gears. So you can see the uh, ring gear bolts. And this is the lock wire to hold the nuts in place from uh, moving. Oh. The gear, the gears seem to be in good shape. I could have uh, lifted the uh, the tire the uh, tires off the buggy, and I had somebody spin the uh, the gears, and it would have been able to inspect all of them. Okay, so I've been using the depth stick for about uh, 30, 40 minutes, and on with the screen on, and switching between cameras, and testing a few things, and checking welds, and. Whatever, and uh, what I notice is that the battery has not decreased at all. So uh, the battery is shown right on the top right hand uh, side, and it has uh, four bars in it. So it's showing you in 25% um, increments. All right, so uh, I basically finished testing the, uh, the depth stack. Um, as I was inspecting the uh, the inside of the differential, I got oil all over the uh, the camera, both cameras, and that's uh, differential gear oil. I basically just took it out and wiped it, and it's back to brand new. The image quality was not affected at all. 
as you can see uh, the umbilical and the probe itself and the cameras are industrial quality so um, I think they will last a long time so overall um, I'm really happy with the uh, depth stack uh, DS580 um, if I was going to buy another one uh, I would definitely buy the one with uh, at least two two cameras because the side camera on it is extremely extremely useful uh, and uh, what I uh, also like about it is the interface is really really nice uh, the image quality is very nice on it too uh, I really like the uh, the ability to be able to uh, save photos and videos and transfer them to your computer uh, the, the battery seems to last a long time so and the entire the entire thing is really built solid so absolutely no issues with it um, if I had to uh, you know make some few ameliorations to it what I would suggest uh, are basically two things so the first one is the uh, uh, the, the the different icons on the screen themselves um, if they could be a different color than white perhaps that would be better but I'm not sure how black would fare as well because as you're looking through different uh, images and areas, uh, depending on the image itself, you can either see or not see the different icons on the side. So that's, it's really difficult. I'm not sure what uh, what color I would pick, uh, but uh, they were not very clear. And the other thing perhaps that could be made better is the uh, the, the battery percentage. It, it could be a little bit more precise. I, I personally like to do that on my own cell phone, for instance, I like to see percentage of uh, how, how much battery is left in it. I mean, it's, these are very minor uh, issues, but overall, very happy with the depth stack and I highly recommend it uh, for any, uh, you know, uh, mechanic, whether you're a amateur mechanics, just like myself, or professional mechanic, or, um, you know, you wanna use it for home. I mean, this is not only for a garage or shop use. I mean, I've already had to use it in the inside of my home and I'll tell you why I wanted to check some of the plugs on the back of my wall mounted TV I couldn't see them and I didn't want to remove the TV this is a huge 70 inch TV well guess what I just got this so I basically just used it and uh, I was able to insert the probe and look at the different um, plugs on the back of the TV to, to make sure where, where to plug the uh, HDMI cable so I used that at home as well I could obviously use it for uh, drainage for instance I really like, uh, you know, the probe, it's, it's, it's pretty good length. Uh, uh, longer than that, it would be a little bit cumbersome to move around. So 10 foot long uh, umbilical is really good. Uh, I think this is a perfect length for a, a mechanic. Uh, I could easily wrap it around if I wanna use it for clothes, or I can unfold it if I wanna use it for a much longer inspection, uh, either through a long tube or go from the side of the differential like for instance if I want to inspect the, the the side gears or check the inner wall of a differential I would remove the the axle the spindle and everything and I would insert this and and check everything uh, so this is a really good tool highly recommended uh, something that you definitely need in your toolbox